Hello everybody, it's me, Midmask, from the YouTube channel, Midmask. I hope you're ready because this is going to be a, probably a bit of a shorter video, where we talk about... No. No. Where we talk about cursed items. Cursed items in Dungeons and Dragons. If you are not really familiar with what they do and what they are, they are an item, once you hold on to it long enough, you attune to it, you become cursed in some way. And typically, this curse in Dungeons & Dragons, specifically in the 5th edition of Dungeons & Dragons, it can be a bit of a boring curse. In fact, the majority of the cursed items in 5th edition are just, if you watch Lord of the Rings, Sauron's Ring. What this means is, the holder of this cursed item becomes selfish, self-absorbed, mean, and they will not let go of that cursed item under any means whatsoever. And like I said, the majority of cursed items have this exact trait, and it's a bit boring. Like, within itself, the idea of, you know, oh, I can't let go of my precious, my precious. <laughs> like, that's, that's fine, right? That's a fun curse for one or two items, but when every single item has the I won't let go of this one item, it's a bit repetitive. So this video is just to explore some ideas I've had of cursed items or ideas that would lead you to make better cursed items. First things first, when we set out to make a cursed item, we wanted to do something terrible, right? That's the entire point of a cursed item. For example, why not have a cursed large warhammer that when you hold it, it boosts your strength and damage to ludicrous levels, but if you ever decide to unattune to it for whatever reason, it like, plummets your strength into feeble levels, you know, negative four modifier, and you can't get your strength back unless you reattune to the hammer, or you use like greater restoration or even wish. This really adds that risk reward and that feeling of oh I am actually cursed there is something really bad happening here the hammer itself its dark deep magic forces you to become reliant upon its strength and no longer yours almost in like a parasitic sense and if that's a bit too much for you right that's a bit of a all or nothing sort of curse and you want to do something a little more level maybe your party's only level three or four and you want just to give them a a little item to give them a taste of what's to come. Why not give them an item that's a very just plain risk reward sort of item? Let me give you another example of a, this kind of cursed item. Why not have a cursed item, like a sword, that can do a critical hit an 18, a 19, or a 20? That's pretty powerful, right? But its downside, its curse, is if you get hit by an 18, 19, or 20, you suffer a critical hit. This way there's that huge potential for damage, but that also huge potential that you get downed in only one or two hits. I think this is a fun way of balancing cursed items, is just to give them huge power, but just something that balances it out. And this is actually a good way to retroactively balance magical items you give in the party, but you're like, oh no, this is way too powerful. This is doing way too much damage and is not balanced for where they are right now in the campaign. You can say that a curse seeps through the magical item at some point and gives them a, a little bit of a balance. And if you're looking for something a little more interesting and a little bit more unique for your curses, why not add a neither here nor there sort of curse? And what this means is, the curse itself isn't necessarily bad, but it's not really good either. It's not something you want in the majority of situations, but in the situations where its niche comes in, you're going to want it. Here's an example of this sort of cursed item. You know how a fighter at level 20, maximum level, they can attack four times per turn? But why not give them a cursed sword that instead of allowing them to attack four times, it converts all of their four attacks into one massive all-or-nothing attack. And that way, the player has to balance their character around the if this hit misses, nothing's gonna happen. But if it hits... And that's a basic example of a 
sort of neutral kind of curse. There are millions of different ways that you can make a curse shift the playstyle of your player or your character or your NPC or whatever you decide to give the curse to. I think giving items that just change the playstyle can really keep things fresh during your campaign, especially if one of your players is getting bored of their class or character, but they don't really want to change into a different one. If you've ever played Risk of Rain 2, you'll know what the void items are. What these items are is they're like other versions of normal items, but they twist and shift the idea a little bit to kind of change up the playstyle. An example would be the ukulele in Risk of Rain 2. What it does is it gives a chain lightning effect. So when you hit something, everything around that creature gets hit by lightning. The alternate version is instead of having that massive area of effect, there's the only one much stronger lightning strike. So consider this when creating your next magical or cursed item. Why not have an item that instead of making them obsess over their sword or their ring or their new set of armor, it just changes and shifts things in a slightly uncomfortable way that maybe they can get used to. Like I said, this can keep things fresh and who knows, maybe you'll open up a new whole opportunity for a subclass within the class within the subclass. That didn't make any sense, but I'm leaving that in. This is probably more of a rant-like video, but I wanted to talk about cursed items because I think they are a very interesting concept that not a lot of people explore. So, I hope this video was helpful and insightful to you. If you have any ideas for cursed items or had a cool experiences with cursed items, put them down in the comments. I'm curious to hear about it. All of that. I bid you adieu. Adios.